let me train your CP770 operators and managers. I'll bring them up to date with the current best practices, make sure that we maximise productivity and minimise costly downtime. This bonus module I call Aussie Ready is about a bunch of some little, some not so little things that, that we did with our 2022 delivery machines to get them really humming and, and live up to their potential. Now let me first start by saying these are amazing machines. There's, there's a ton of stuff that's really right about them and, and often a major improvement on the old girls. So, uh, so yeah, don't think I'm bashing them but let's just get this, uh, these things right and, uh, and have a cracking harvest. These new belly doors are really superb. The reversible cooling fan works amazingly. The Gen 4 screens and the four cameras are really excellent. The new ladder is a lot safer and better to use in every way. The walkways make life so much easier and the external keypads are just brilliant. Uh, with the much faster wrap and eject cycle time, uh, you really do notice the improvement in productivity. The swing out rubber wrap roller makes changing a roll of wrap a lot simpler. The cab is super and much quieter than the old machines. So there really is plenty that's great about them. And some of the issues that we'll discuss here have hopefully been addressed with the 2023 delivery machines. At the start of 2022's harvest, we really struggled for enough air. Now, fitting the smaller diameter stripper pulley uh, did the most improvement, but there was a lot of other little things that, that we can do to really optimize that air and uh, get the maximum ground speed out of these machines without blocking a door. This fan, this side one, gets uh, oily lint all over its um, blades, which wouldn't be good for balance or efficiency. And it's a uh, pain in the ass. We reckon it's coming from the blow-by the right side fan is clean as a whistle. There's the blow-by. And uh, there's the oily dust on this door. So we reckon we need to drill a hole in the belly doors. Directly beneath it. If I can get in here. Drill an oversized hole in there and extend the um, extend that pipe. It's going to need 150 mil and get that Get that crankcase breather, uh, putting that oily air out the bottom. If 
So for the people with the Gen 1 770, they came, shoot two, came like the old 690 and 7760 shoots. So it's three pieces. It has this, this mechanism and that was that was for getting at the cab air filter on the old girls. The uh, cab air filter is now here. So this three piece suit is unnecessary and we found there's just an enormous air gap around around that joint where all the tape is and that's what's uh, that's what we think's making shoot to the weakest shoot on these machines or part of the problem so we made all sorts of attempts to seal that with pool noodles and uh, door frame foam duct tape but um, they were only ever small fixes the best one i saw was expanding foam and that's the only machine i've heard of that shoot two wasn't their weakest shoot so uh, the Gen 2 770s are not going to have that, I believe. So uh, that'll be great. And yeah, I think it needs changing on Gen 1. Because these machines were struggling for air and we were getting shoot blocks in head two, we've just done everything we can to stop air loss. And you can always feel a bit of air loss around these shoot assists. Uh, so we've pulled them out and silicon the front and the rear one and we've also siliconed in those venturis we're losing air because of those gaps we did remove these venturis that uh, that feed the chute and uh, and we've siliconed they had gaps as well so we've siliconed in them, trying to uh, trying to make it lose the minimum air so that it has the maximum vacuum. And best practice seems to be to shorten that six inch air hose with the heads right down on flat ground, uh, make it as short as it can be. And that way the air has the smoothest path I've been reminded that for some people this CP770 is their first John Deere cotton picker and the inline heads on John Deere cotton pickers where both the front and rear drum are picking from the right side of the bush they've always had this habit of trying the front drum kind of tries to pick every bowl on the plant and that overwhelms the gap behind the doffer between the doffer and the chute where all that cotton's got to pass through, it can overwhelm that and cause a door block. So we try to let a bit extra cotton through to that back drum in these really high yielding crops. Now that, now that 15 bales a hectare is becoming quite common and over 20 is, uh, is starting to happen, we really seem to need to uh, let a bit more through to the back drum and we achieve this by adjusting the gap on the pressure door wider, the front pressure door, and by backing off its spring tension. The book says two holes pressure for the front pressure door, but we will back it off to one, and I've even heard of half a hole. The trick is to just adjust them one at a time and then check behind the machine that it's doing an acceptable job. This one's, this one's closer than we normally set it. I like to have a whole finger off that pressure, off the front pressure door. And the back one's a bit harder to see with the scrapping plate, but it's pretty much by the book. Three to six mil and three holes pressure. It's a damn good crop.
this footage is from early in the season when we were still sorting all these issues out, probably 10 days in. Once we got the machines optimised, we would have been travelling at probably 7.2 kilometres an hour instead of 6.4, and maybe slowing to 6.6 .6 or 6.8 for the wrap and eject cycle. These little things really can add up to a big difference. Just keep it slow till the accumulator starts dropping. All right, back to operating speed. the cotton going into the accumulator. So what's going on here in the camera is the right side, the far side of the accumulator, has got over full and forced me to slow down so I don't spill it. But the left side that's closest to us, closest to the camera, has so much space in it you can still see the auger. So that's the uneven filling that I'm talking about. So when these machines were delivered, they have fully half of the cotton going into just one third of the accumulator. You've got all three chutes from four, five and six in just that part. And then these other two thirds of the accumulator handle the other three. So, so it's just vital that we get every chute on the machine as far to the left, I'm facing backwards, as far to the left as we can to give us the most even accumulator. That way we can hold the most cotton and get through the wrap and eject cycle at the uh, maximum speed. Otherwise you'll have plenty of spare space on this side of the accumulator. It's only got two. And there's one going in here. Yeah, and three in that segment. So just get every chute as far to the left as we can. And we do that by pushing them across and then holding them over there with a hose clamp. It's uh, pretty simple. I was just cleaning in head five and for some reason the little doffer door just popped open. The, um, the latch on them, I don't know, I've had, I've had it happen a few times this year. I've had, I found this one on head six ajar, but because it's got because this chute does a dog leg in behind it, it actually can't open. But yeah, these latches must be getting knocked out. Do something that locks them in. Because they, uh, they really only get used when you're removing doffers. And really, it's only one head that it works on. The rest of the time, we just pull the doffers out this gap. So, uh, I think I'll be latching them. They, um, or locking them. That's the sort of thing, if that doffer door was open, all of the cotton that the rear head is picking would drop on the ground out that door. This is what happens when the little doffer doors come open at the back. The stalks seem to poke them open when you reverse in the field. So I'll be uh, putting a little screw in ours or splittering or something to uh, just stop that happening. You lose the whole back drums cotton. There's no alarms and yeah, it just happens randomly. It's not random. When you back up in the field, the stalks are poking the latch open. That white stripe is something I'm always watching for on my rear facing camera. You can see the one there in the picture. Now, I don't know if this is the only machine that had this, or if heaps of them do, but at the start of the season, the machine I was driving, when I would grease the heads, the slowest head took a full 60 seconds more 
grazing time than the fastest ones. And that forced me to over-grease all the other heads on the machine to get that slowest one properly greased. And I searched high and low for the cause and eventually the last thing I checked was these nipples in the six-way picker grease manifold in under the cap. And they had significant amounts of silicon on particularly that slowest one. It was almost completely blocked. So if your greasing is not really even, it would be worth checking these. The handler on the CP770s is different to the older machines. The old girls have four beams and cutouts between them that our meter rows kind of fit in. The 770 has five beams and no cutouts. Our meter rows run almost beneath one of the beams and to make matters worse, there's a crossbar that has a forward facing edge, meaning it almost acts as a cutting edge. It fully pulls stalks from the ground and leaves a much bigger gouge than the old machines when you're dropping a module off in the field. And that really did make life harder for the mulchers, root cutters and subsequent operations. We made some cutouts in ours to try and improve it and they did improve it a little bit, but not enough. Uh, and you actually really feel it make the machine work hard while it's dragging on the ground, which is just unnecessary stress on, on every part of the machine. The only good solution I've seen is this machine here. And they sheeted in that section uh, so that it would just skim along on the ground and I'm told it worked excellently throughout the season. There was also talk that you could calibrate the handler on flat ground with a, a big block of wood or a sleeper underneath it so that it doesn't push down into the soil so much. We didn't do that, but um, it might be worth a try. We actually were catching it with the, the up arrow um, just before it touched the dirt. So we'd press down and then catch it just before it touched down. And while that did work, the modules were often slow to roll off. Sometimes you had to press it down a little bit more to get them to move off. And it was just another thing to train where you want it to be simple, a full down press. Once the module's gone, a full up press. This is one of the things I wouldn't mind. This should be a pre-delivery. I think it's the only thing that wears now. Uh, all the all the guarding under the belly is so good. The back axle didn't need any extra protection. But these unit lift cylinders need protecting. This tether on picker one came without anything attaching it and it's, uh, it's contacts have got bad. I'm pressing it there. Now I'll bend this to the side, it starts working. Bend it back, stops. So I'm gonna zippy tie up the rest of the season, but that needs fixing. This is the one with no sticker as well. This is picker two. That's what she should have looked like. And a sticker. The CP770s give your solution pressure adjustments in percentage terms instead of PSI, like the old machines. And there's a chart in the operator's manual comparing 50 PSI in a CP690 to 100% in a CP770. Now this is deceiving because the chart is referring to TX3 nozzles in the 690 and TX4 nozzles in the 770. So it's not really apples and apples. We ran TX6s in our front drums and TX4s in the back and plenty of people ran TX8s up front and 6s in the back drums. The maximum pressure of this new electric pump is only 150 kPa or 22 psi. So we run from five to 100%. Now, if you're a maths nerd, this might annoy you a bit because you think 5% is, you know, 1 20th of the water that's coming out at 100%, but it's actually not. If you do the sums on this, 
65% is actually 60, 63 or 4% of 100%. So, uh, and yeah, so I, I was reluctant to go to 5% thinking the nozzles will probably barely have a pattern. Uh, I was using 25 as my lowest, but realistically, you might as well start and finish your day at 5%. And I really like to align those three little lobes on the clip with those plastic wing nuts. It doesn't hurt your fingers then when you grab it. Maybe I'm just getting old and precious, but it really does make a difference. Plenty of owners chose to fit a higher volume solution filter and place it in a convenient to access position. This seemed to work really well and certainly made it less likely that you'll have to stop and clean the filter between tank fills. And it's also a handy thing for washing your hands or cleaning the little nozzle strainers. So yeah, I, I quite like it. Our machines came with inaccurate bar heights. They were up to a 15th hour range and I did hear of worse. And so we had to fix them during the season which cost us valuable time. So I recommend no more than a 6th hour range and I would be checking at least one or two front drums when your machine's delivered and if they're fine uh, you might choose to go with that but uh, I wouldn't just blindly assume they're um, they're within that 6th hour range. I've got a good example here of uh, inaccurate bar heights. We, um, we got them down to a 10th hour range, but any work you put into them, I reckon I'm going to start down to 6th hour. Any work you put in just saves you later. So this spindle here with all this wrap on it, that's going to damage that buffer plate. The other ones in his row are clean. So there's 16 bars. Let's have a look at how that row looks. That's one, two, three, four, five, got a bit, six, seven's got a lot, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So there's there's a few in there with cotton on them. They'll be low bars, so the doffer's not cleaning them as well. And then once it builds up like that, damages the doffer plate, and then uh, you're up for a whole new doffer. So uh, accurate bar heights are worth so much for reliability through the season. The operator's manual on page 90-13 has a suggested design for a moisture pad tool, and I can confirm that they are brilliant. They really are a must have. I used to use screwdrivers, but they were so much slower and I would hurt my knuckles heaps more using a screwdriver. So it really is worth having one in every machine. This one's made out of a welding rod. It's a bit soft, but a fencing wire one would be good. We just hook it in, hook one corner off. Two corners. This one's a two handed job. I get the hook in, clean down the side so that the lip's going to go on. You pull up and roll over. Then we get both sides on nice. Pull up, roll over. All the while you're pushing with this hand. Another thing when our machines were new is the moisture pads weren't uh, fully aligned. They were set so that we had proper contact in the sort of top 10, but it turned out the, some of the lower moisture pads weren't actually contacting the spindles, so we were getting wrap in the bottom of our drums. And um, so it really is worth, when you uh, receive your machine, check that every single moisture pad in every head is getting that perfect contact and, uh, and you won't have that rough start that we did. So this is just a tiny snippet of 
uh, what I offer in CP770 Essentials, which is my one day training course for the CP770, in which I'll come to your workplace and, and deliver this in person. Uh, I'll watch the uh, online modules with your team and then in between discuss, uh, answer questions and hopefully have a machine next to us that we can uh, get our hands on and um, all really help with the recall so that when that crop's ripe, we really can hit the ground running. The other thing you get is full online access to all the learning modules for the entire harvest season. So every attendee can choose to rewatch some or all of it before harvest starts or during harvest if they're struggling with a certain aspect it's always there to, uh, to use as a guide. And many clients are choosing to send along their 7760 and CP690 operators. It is, the majority of the course is John Deere round module building cotton pickers. Um, so it is relevant, the buttons and um, screens might be different, but it really does translate into the older machines. So if you found some value in this, Please share it widely. Um, I think everyone is going to get a lot of value just from this, let alone the whole course. So anyone that's got a machine coming, anyone that runs John Deere Cotton Pickers, doesn't have to be Australia, please share it. Contact me, Troy, at realskillsagtraining.com.au or find and follow me on the socials. Thank you.